Panorama stitching may not always be seamless, depending on the source imagery being used. Images with lens distortions or difficult perspectives may produce seam errors. These are, however, fixable with tools in Affinity Photo's Panorama Persona. To demonstrate these, I'll go to File, New Panorama, and I'll add some images that were taken with a drone. My goal here was to stitch together several images in order to produce a higher resolution composite. Once I've clicked Stitch Panorama to generate a preview, I can click OK to render the full resolution panorama. Once the panorama has been rendered, zooming in reveals a seam mismatch here. To come back out, I'll use Fit to Screen, which is Command-0 on Mac, Control-0 on Windows. Then I'll investigate these tools on the left-hand Tools panel. The Transform Source Image tool can be used to manually alter the transforms applied to the images in order to align them. Single-clicking over an area allows us to move between the different images being used to create the final panorama. So if there are some very obvious seam errors, you may need to adjust the perspective transform manually using this tool. However, the majority of issues can be solved with the Add to Source Image Mask tool. I'll select it, and now only one image remains highlighted. What I can do now is zoom into the affected area and single click through to see the different images that are contributing to the final stitch of this area. Now the next step involves some trial and error. Looking through the different images that are used to create this portion of the panorama, I might select this image and we can see some areas with a light overlay. These are currently not being used for the final stitch. I can click drag and brush over these areas to mask them. And I'll go right up to the Abbey structure here. We are now manually determining that the stitching procedure should factor in more of this image. This will hopefully affect how the surrounding areas are blended and remove the seam error. To re render the panorama with these changes, I can click render up here. This appears to have been successful. I should, however, double check that the area to the right is not being negatively affected. So I can quickly switch to the hand tool using H and click drag to pan along. And for the majority of images, this is all the extra work that will be required. Once you have defined manual mask areas with the Add to Source Image Mask tool, you can always switch across to the Arrays from Source Image Mask tool, and these areas will show up very clearly, so you can easily erase them and re-render if you need to try again. As usual with panoramas, I can select the Crop tool and crop away some of the alpha areas. Then to fill the remaining areas, I can enable In Paint Missing Areas on the top toolbar, then click Apply. And there we go, that was a quick look at the manual masking tools available when stitching panoramas. Thank you for watching.